Welcome back for another exciting C Sharp YouTube tutorial. We're going to start experimenting with data validation and if statements. You should be in week 7 and you scroll down and you will see programming challenge 4 find the largest number in data validation. I'm going to right click to save as. I'm going to click on documents, my documents, Visual Studio 2012 projects and I'm going to put it there. Okay, I'm waiting for the downloads to complete. I click here, right click, open containing folder, right click, extract here. And you will see that the biggest should show up right there. Double click, click on the solution, and up starts Visual Studio. I'm going to take a look at the form. Again, you can see some of the properties, everything's set the way I want, and you can see everything's named properly. Okay, let's run this program. And we have always entered in text in here and converted it to the proper data type. And the one thing I never showed you was what happens if I enter in bad or invalid numeric data. You can clearly see I entered in 10x. And here I am going to put in valid numbers. Let's see what C Sharp does when it encounters bad data it's trying to convert. This is called a format exception was unhandled or an error. What it's trying to say is we're trying to convert 10x to an integer. And you should remember numbers such as integers, floats, doubles, bytes, shorts, can only handle the numbers 0 through 9. And if it is a float, double, or decimal, it can handle a decimal point and a decimal value. So this is called non-numeric data. So I'm going to show you how to fix it. We're going to stop running the program, and then we're going to do our magic. What we're going to do is get rid of this convert. Remember the four easy steps, declare and convert? I'm going to show you different ways to convert the data. Well, in this code, we're trying to find the largest three numbers, and I'm going to show you three different ways to code data validation. And I'm going to ask you, which do you like when you're done? Okay, notice step two, convert and validate, and notice using three different approaches. 2.1, validate and convert number one. So what we're going to do is this piece of code should look very familiar to you. Take the text that's in number one, text number one, convert it to int32. Int32 corresponds with a regular int. See up here, I declared as int, comma, 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 semicolon. But where we have something different is a try catch. What you do is you code a try with a beginning curly brace and an ending curly brace. And within these curly braces, you put what you're trying to convert. If it works, it will convert this and put it into a numeric. If the code within the try catch fails, execution of the code comes down here. I have a message box pop up that will say invalid number for number one. This will be the title. I have the OK button in the message box icon will be exclamation. Notice there's a comma, 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 and a semicolon. We put the focus on one, text box number one. We select all the contents in it, and we do a return. A return will skip over all the code below and exit out. That's one way of doing it. This is pretty straightforward. So the only difference is you got to put a try catch around the convert, and then you could actually take this block of code, copy it, and put it right into your code, and it will work. The next is called the try parse, and the book introduces this before they really explain what it is. But what happens is this is an object, and this is a method. These are methods too. Remember anything with parentheses, and actually this is a method too. The dot show. So it's a little tricky, but you have to code exactly like this. You put the text box and the dot text property, and you attempt or try to parse this. Parse is conversion. It's another way of converting. Take the text box text, try parsing it to an integer, and put the answer, if it comes out OK, into I number 2. So we're saying take this text box, that text, try parsing it to an int, and if it works, put what was ever in here in text converted to an integer. Notice you don't need to convert anymore. You just have to put the data type, int.try parse. If it works, we don't need to do anything because it works brilliantly. 
If this doesn't work, it comes down to the else. This if means did it work, else it didn't. Notice this message box is very similar to one up here, but we just make it for number two. And the bit pretty much this is the same, two, three, and four. We set the focus to text box two, we select all, and we stop validating. This one is this code written a little easier. Notice there's a true part and a false part. So right here we say try parsing the text that's in the text box number three. Try making it an int. If it comes out okay, put the value in here. So the text gets converted to an integer. Notice the not means if it works not or does not work, then we have the message box come up. This code, notice we don't need an else. We just say if it did not, remember not, um, exclamation is the negation or how you say not in C sharp. So try parsing the text that's in number three to an integer and put it, if it comes out all right, put it here. And then not means not okay, you show the message. Else it works. Notice there's no else, but this code works and is not a not. I know it's confusing, so I suggest you use one or two if you're not sure of it. And notice we come down here, and here's how we find the largest of three numbers. Let's look at it. If number one is greater than or equal to number two, and number one is greater than or equal to number three, one's the biggest. If not, we come down here, and notice we're not even looking at number one anymore, because if this line of code was true, this would happen, and it would skip down. Notice step three, we always calculate or compare. So if we get to this point, we know one's not the biggest, and we need to figure out is two greater than or equal to three, and if that's true, then two's the biggest. If it's not one, and it's not two, therefore it needs to be number three. And step four, my easy to follow instructions of step to declare, two to convert, three to calculate or compare, four to output. So let's try Ronan's code and see what it looks like. Before we do that, let's go up and put a breakpoint right here. Let's start here so we can watch the code execute. All right, I'm going to move it over here. And the reason I'm moving over here is when we're debugging it, we can see what's going on. So I'm going to put 10x, I'm going to put 20x, and 30x. Because we know these are invalid numbers, and we're going to see what happens. Click OK. We step through the code. OK, notice we try to convert 10x to an integer. It will fail, and it will come down here. And then we'll have a message box pop up. Here's the message box. See? This message goes here. The title goes here. The OK button, we're telling we want an OK button, and the exclamation shows up because we told it this. So let's come back here. Let me step through the, oh, I gotta make sure, I gotta get that message box to go away. So I click OK. Control comes back here. I set the focus, I select all, and notice I'm gonna skip over the rest of the code. No sense doing any more logic if the data is invalid. We're out of here, and I hit F5 to run. So look at the highlights and I make it 10. I click OK. And we step through the code. I'm hitting F10 if you want to remember that. Convert 10 to integer. Look, it worked. So it's going to now skip over the catch. Think of this as like a true false. Try this if it works, else do the catch. Come down here. Notice we're going to try to convert 20x to out to an integer. And notice it did not work. We got an error or faults that came out of here if it did not work come here same thing comes up here's the message there the title so on and so forth I click OK we skip through we return out I hit F5 we correct that look at no program blowing up no runtime errors the code looks good we step through the code this works now watch this time this is gonna work it won't come to the else it will skip down to here here we go. And this should fail. 30x cannot be outputted to a integer. We get the error message. And the reason we don't need the else is because we made the true part false. But the negation, we only need the true. We step through the code. Here comes number three. See, there it is. Click OK. We come back. And the reason I'm sounding a little fast is because YouTube only lets me post videos that are less than 12 minutes. I click OK, and let's see what happens. It works. It works. And it works. So now we come down here and we compare. Is 10 greater than 20? And 
is 10 greater than 30 and that should be false so notice we don't even do this part we skip is 20 greater than 30 false we come to here 30 is determined to be the biggest number and we output it to the screen and we have a beautiful piece of code that determines what the biggest number is okay I have about 30 seconds to show you if we mix up the numbers a little bit see what happens oh I'm gonna make that 10 we click OK, we skip through the code, and we hit F5. Notice, we check, is 30 greater than 20? And so far, that looks good. Is 30 greater than 10? And so far, that's true. Notice, we set this to true, and we skip over all these, and we output it. There we go. And let's change this real quick. Let's make this 20, and we'll make this 30, and see what happens. Click OK. We're going to run it, hit F5. We step through the code. Look, it knows right away that 30 is greater than 10, and here we go. Beautiful.